Section six, left twisted stitch strip. We're going to pick up stitches off of the section five I chord edge right here. So this is the left strip. You should be looking at this and then your left wedges should be right there. So the middle of the shawl is here in the middle. So the left, we're looking at the left sections. That's very important. So we're gonna start by picking up stitches in the corner. For row one, right side, we're gonna use the accent color. This is the same color that you used for the twisted stitches in those short row sections. So accent color. Using accent color, pick up and knit three stitches from the I-cord bind off corner of section five right here. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little trick on exactly where to pick that up. Where after that, we're gonna pick up 15 stitches along this edge. So I'm gonna count on the wrong side. I'm gonna count 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is the 15th one right there. So we're gonna pick those up after we do this first pickup. So after that 15th stitch, that's the 15th one, right here is where you pick up. So I wanna get three single strands of yarn. One, two, three. And do you see how I skipped a strand? I picked up one, skipped one. Picked up one, skipped one. Picked up one, and then you have 15 to pick up later after that. So this is what we want. We want those three stitches along that bound off corner. We're gonna use a new needle. So this is a new needle. Keep those stitches on a spare circular needle or waste yarn from that short row section. All right, let's get going. So I need to get these stitches onto my left needle tip. So however you need to do that, get them on your left needle tip. You could also go one, two, three, any three strands of yarn work, okay? Don't be too picky, but just pick up some strands there at the corner and let's knit them. One, two, three. Now, pick up and knit three, make one four times along the left I chord edge. Look at the wrong side and then get that first I chord stitch that you see. One, two, and three. Make one. We're gonna do that four times. That was the first time. One, two, three, going through both legs of each stitch, three times, and then make one. That was number two. Here's the third repeat. Two, three, and make one. And the fourth time, we're gonna go one, two, three, and make one, and then pick up and knit three, three more, one, two, and three. You should have 22 stitches on your needle. Turn to work wrong side. So we're only going to be working with these stitches. Ignore those stitches that are on your waist yarn or spare circular needle. We'll work with those later. Row two, wrong side. Pick up and knit three stitches from the main color I chord edge of section two. I'm going to do that same thing where I get one single strand of yarn, one single strand of yarn. And for the third one, I'm just going to dive in. You could get this, you could get this strand. Just get any three strands of yarn and get them onto the left needle. So three single strands of yarn from that main color. Pick them up. That looks just fine to me. It doesn't have to be the exact strand that I got. Just get three strands of the main color picked up and knit. One, two, three. Now we're going to knit one, purl one through the back loop five times. Knit one. Purl one through the back loop, like this. And purl that through the back loop. Knit one, purl one through the back. Knit one. If you're holding the yarn in your right hand, 
the yarn needs to be in front as you purl through the back. Knit one, purl through the back. If it feels a little bit too tight, then you can loosen that stitch a little bit first and then go into the back. Knit one, purl one through the back loop. Just like that. So five times, one, two, three, four, five. Then knit nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Knit your nine stitches and you should be at the final three stitches. Slip three with yarn in front. If you're not at the final three stitches, then you can sneak in an extra increase or decrease there. You can always get back on track with a little fudging of your row. We're going to do a pattern repeat and we're going to make some fun twisted stitches that travel. Row three, right side, knit three, purl eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So your work should look like this now. You've got that little purl bump next and then that little twisted stitch right there. After you purl eight, cable two back five times. So you can use your cable needle and cable two back means we're working with two stitches and we're going to slip that first stitch onto the cable needle and hold it in back. Knit the next stitch through the back loop like this. Okay, so that stitch is in back. Knit through the back loop. That next stitch and then that stitch from the cable needle. We're just going to purl it. That was cable two back. We're going to do that five times. So slip that First stitch onto the cable needle, hold it in back. I need to put my yarn in the back so I can knit one through the back loop. And then purl that one stitch from the cable needle. So keep on going. We're going to do that five times. I did it two times already. I'm going to show you with the cable needle now and in a little bit I'll show you how to do that without a cable needle as well if you feel like this is a little fiddly. Okay, this is the third time. Slip one with the cable needle. Hold it in back. Knit one through the back loop. Bring the yarn forward to purl one. From the cable needle. All right. Slip one, hold it to the back. Knit one through the back loop. And purl one from the cable needle. That was the fourth time. I need to do that one more time. Cable two back. Slip one to the cable needle, hold in back. Knit the next stitch through the back loop. And purl one from the cable needle. All right, we did it five times. Then you have one more purl stitch. Purl one, slip three with yarn in front. Row four, wrong side. Knit five, four and five. Purl one through the back loop. Knit one, purl one through the back loop four times. Knit, purl through the back, knit, purl through the back, knit, purl through the back, knit, and purl through the back. That was the fourth time. Knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. Slip those last three, whoops, with yarn in front. There we go. We're always going to slip the last three with yarn in front. So we're going to start to get a little strip and these twisted stitches are going to start to emerge and travel. So let me show you row five and I'm going to show you how to cable without a cable needle. Knit three, one, two, three, purl seven, three, four, five, six, seven. You should have one purl stitch followed by a twisted stitch right there. So after you purl sev seven, cable two back. Without a cable needle, I'm going to take my right needle in front of everything and I'm going to insert it through into the back loop of that twisted stitch. So I'm going to ignore that stitch and I'm going just into the back of that twisted stitch. I'm going to take both stitches off my left needle and watch my left needle. It's going to rescue that first stitch. And look, that first stitch is going to the back. Now I can knit that twisted stitch and purl one. That was a cable two back. Let's do that again. You can insert through that twisted stitch through the back. Left needle goes out, behind, and in. And now that stitch can be knit through the back. Purl one. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, same thing. Go into the back of that twisted stitch. Take the needle out and rescue that first stitch. And then place that stitch onto the left needle again. And now we can knit it through the back. And purl one. So give it a try. I, I really like this. With just two stitches, it's not so necessary to use the cable needle. But if you feel safe with that cable needle, then go for it. But I love this little shortcut trick. Needle goes into the back of that second stitch. Out and in. And there we go. Knit through the back. Purl one. I've got one more twisted stitch, so I need to do that one more time. Into the back of that stitch. And it travels one stitch to the right. Knit the twisted stitch through the back always. And then purl one. Whew, we did it. So that was the cable two back five times. And now you purl two and slip three with yarn in front. Those are all the techniques for the beginning of this section. So I'm going to keep on going and every right side row, these five twisted stitches travel one stitch to the right. So they're going to travel to the right and make this beautiful slant. So keep on following the rows closely and I will catch up with you on a future row. I just finished row 18 and the stitches traveled all the way to the right edge. You have one purl stitch now. After your three I-cord stitches, you have one purl stitch followed by your twisted ribbing. Row 19, right side, we're not going to do a cable for six rows. So these next six rows won't have any cabling. Knit three, purl one, knit one through the back, purl one, knit one through the back, four times. That was the fourth time. Purl nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, slip three with yarn in front. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place one of my stitch markers below that purl bump that I just made right there. 
So that means that that pearl bump I see, that was the first time, that's row 19. I want to see six of those before I continue with row 25. So we're going to do, we just did row 19, you're going to do row 20, and then you're going to repeat that twice more. So we did 19, row 20, and then you do row 19 and 20 again, and row 19 and 20 again for six total rows without any cables. So that's why for me a stitch marker helps. So when I place that, I know that oh, right after my stitch marker is when I worked row 19, and I need to work six rows. Rows 19 and 20 worked three times for six total rows with no cables. And uh, that just helps me remember to keep on track with my rows and make sure I don't do too many or too few. So keep on going. Those are the techniques for rows 19 and 20. And then you'll repeat those twice more. And I'll see you for row 25. I just finished row 24. And I also know that because of my helpful stitch marker. I have one, two, three, four, five, six pearl bump rows above my stitch marker that was placed right before row 19. So I have rows 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. No cabling happened, so it should look just like this. Now I can remove that. That was helpful. Row 25, knit 3, purl 1. Cable to front five times. We're going to slip the first stitch onto the cable needle, hold it in front. Purl the next stitch, and then knit one through the back loop from the cable needle, like that. So we're going to keep the twisted stitches twisted, and we're going to keep the purl stitches purled. So we're going to do that five times. This is the second time. Cable to front. The first stitch goes to the front. So you can purl the next stitch and then knit one through the back loop. That was two times. Here's the third twisted stitch. Bring it to the front, purl one, and knit that stitch from the cable needle through the back loop. So I need to do that twice more. Purl one. Knit one through the back loop from the cable needle. One more time. Purl one. And knit that stitch from the cable needle through the back loop. That was five times all of our twisted stitches are now going to travel one stitch to the left every right side row until you're at the left edge. So after you cable to front five times, purl eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Slip three with yarn in front. Row 26, wrong side, knit 11, Ten, eleven. purl one through the back loop, knit one, purl one through the back loop four times, knit one, Purl one through the back. Knit one. Purl one through the back. Knit one. Purl one through the back. Knit one. Purl one through the back loop. Four times. And knit two. Slip three with yarn in front. You should always have the same stitch count in this section. Row 27. Let's try that cable to front without a cable needle. 
Knit 3, purl 2. Cable to front. I'm going to take my right needle behind the strand of yarn and it's going to go behind that first stitch and in to purl that second stitch. Slip both of them off and then bring that knit stitch onto the left needle like this in front. Purl the stitch and knit the twisted stitch. That was a cable to front. One more time for you continental knitters. The right needle goes behind everything to get the purl stitch. Only the purl stitch. Don't go through both stitches. So I'm going behind everything and into that purl stitch. Slide the left needle out. Insert it into that knit stitch. Purl the stitch and knit one through the back loop. That was two times for the cable to front for you English style knitters holding the yarn in your right hand. You can bring the yarn forward first and then insert, go behind everything and insert the right needle into the purl stitch. Get that knit stitch. Purl one and knit one through the back. Again, bring the yarn forward and we're going to get that purl stitch. Go behind everything, get the purl stitch, slide the left needle out, rescue the knit stitch as it travels in front, and then you can purl one, knit one through the back. One more time, give this some practice because I really like this method. Go behind, behind that knit stitch, into the purl stitch, slide the left needle out and then in and we purl one, knit one through the back. Those are the cable to front techniques. Keep on following these rows closely and after these stitches travel all the way to the left, follow the rows. You could print them off and tick off your rows and check them off as you knit them to make sure you're on track. And then these stitches are going to travel all the way to the left and then you're going to work six rows without cabling and then they're going to travel to the right and you work six rows without cabling. They travel to the left, six rows without cabling. So we're going to get this meandering twisted cable. It's one of my favorite details in this shawl. So it's short row, very short uh, stitch counts, small rows. So I have a little bit of patience in this section. It's a little, little strip, but it has a lot of impact in the final design, and I think you're going to love it. So persevere with those twisted stitches, follow the rows closely, and I'll see you at the end of this section. Look at those beautiful twisted stitches emerging. This is the end of section six with a nice I-cord bind off to finish that sides, to finish this twisted strip. So section six is complete and we have these waves that go in uh, twisted ribbing. It goes right and then left and then right and then left, right and then left. And a fourth time it goes right and then left and then it goes right again for a final time. So you'll have four times where it goes one and two and three and four and then it does one final little to the right. So this is what the end of section six should look like. And don't worry if it rolls and curls a little bit because we're going to fix that later um, with some stuff we're going to do later. You'll see, you'll see, but don't worry if it curls because it'll lay flat eventually. But I love that beautiful crisp detail to the section six pattern repeats. Section seven, right twisted stitch strip. We're going to pick up stitches along the right I-cord edge of section four. So look at that cable. This is the center. Uh, this is that section one. We have the cables. This is section four. We're going to pick up stitches along this right edge. Row one, right side. We're going to use the accent color. It's going to be a mirror image of section six that we just knit. So same color as section six, row one using accent color, pick up and knit three stitches from the main color 
I-chord corner of section three, right here. So I'm just gonna start by getting a couple stitches onto my needle. So get a new needle and there's two stitches. I'm just gonna get one strand from each of these stitches that I see and get those onto my left needle. I need three, one more. So let's get that one more. You could pick up this strand. Ooh, I see one, a good one right here. We'll get this. It doesn't really matter. Get any three main color strands as long as you have something that looks like this at that little corner. So you could also just go one, two, and get a third one with your left needle tip. Using the accent color, we're gonna knit three. We're gonna knit those three picked up stitches. Pick up and knit three, make one four times along the right I chord edge of section four. Looking at the wrong side. This is where we wanna pick up. Now what we're seeing here, we've got our I chord stitches and I'm gonna go into the first one right here. So you could count as well. We have one stitch, two stitch from the I chord. This is the third stitch. So I wanna get that first one that rolls to the wrong side. One, two, and three, make one. If you're not sure exactly which ones you're going into, just try to get the same ones that are going in a column. One, two, three, make one. We need to do that four total times. I've done it twice so far. This is the third time. One, two, three, make one. And one more time, knit one, two, three, make one. That was four times. Pick up and knit three, get three more. One, two, and three. You should have 22 stitches. Turn to work the wrong side. As long as you have 22 stitches, you're good to go. Row two, wrong side. Pick up and knit three stitches from the contrast color I chord corner of section four. Right here, this corner, we need three stitches. Get any three strands of yarn. You could get them with the left needle tip starting here to get one, two, and three. There's a third strand of yarn, that works. Or you could use the right needle tip starting over here. One, two, and something over here, three. So whatever you need to do, just get three contrast color strands of yarn, single strands of yarn, onto the left needle tip and knit them. There's no right or wrong. Well, this one looks a little bit twisted. Well, I could go that, I might go through the back loop of that one. That looks nice and smooth. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. As long as you get three and knit them, you're gonna have a nice continuation from that I chord edge. Knit nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Purl one through the back loop, knit one five times. Purl through the back, knit one. Purl through the back, knit one. Purl through the back, knit one. Purl through the back, 
knit one, purl through the back. If you need to loosen that stitch a little, that's okay, so you can more easily purl through the back. Knit one. That was the fifth time. And now you're ready to slip three with yarn in front. If you're not, then do a double check. You should have 25 stitches on your needle, and that's the stitch count for the entire section. 25 stitches. If you need to sneak in an increase or decrease at any time, if you're missing a stitch somehow, then just sneak it in. Row three, right side. Knit three, purl one. Cable two front five times. We're going to use the same cable techniques as section six. Cable two front. The first stitch goes in front. Purl the next stitch. Knit through the back loop from the cable needle. Again. The first stitch goes to the cable needle in front. Purl the next stitch. Knit one through the back from the cable needle. The third time. Purl one. And then knit the stitch from the cable needle through the back. So use the same cable instructions as you did, the same techniques from the other section. I really like cabling without a cable needle, so this twisted stitch needs to go in front. So the first thing I need to do is purl that second stitch. Take that twisted stitch in front, purl and knit through the back. The last time, cable to front, get that purl stitch. The knit stitch travels in front. Purl the stitch, and now we knit through the back. Cable to front five times. Cable to front, they're going to travel to the left this time. Purl eight. And slip three with yarn in front. So those are the techniques. We're going to use the same kind of cable techniques. The cable to front always is going to travel towards the left edge, and then we're going to work those six rows even without uh, any cabling like we did in the previous section. And then the cable to back is going to move the stitches to the right. So we're going to go left and then right, left and then right to make a mirror image to section six. Follow the rows very closely, making sure you're doing the cable to front and the cable to back when you need to, and use that stitch marker if it comes in handy to help mark which row you're on. Take some notes in your pattern, and uh, I'll catch you at the end of this section so that I can show you what the finished things, thing looks like. Here is the finished section seven with those beautiful mirrored twisted stitches that travel. And section seven, you see that those twisted stitches go from one side and to the other. So that's back and forth once, back and forth twice, back and forth three times, back and forth a fourth time, and then a final little diagonal travel to the left. So it should do that little back and forth bit four times, one, two, three, and four, and there's that final little left travel. And you have an I-cord bind off to finish that beautiful section seven. So there it is, it's really crispy. Yeah, don't worry about that curled edge. It's gonna stretch out really nicely. But uh, keep on going, and we'll see what happens next for the final sections. The I-cord embellishment is an optional treatment that we're going to do to the cabled sections. So if you want an extra decoration using your accent color, this is the same color as those twisted stitches from the short row sections. 
then follow along. You're going to need a tapestry needle and your accent color and your working needle. If your needles are occupied by holding your stitches at the moment, you can still use them. So right now my needle is through these uh, on the waist yarn of the short row sections, but you can still use these needle tips because we're just going to make little I-cord tails. So watch this video. You can skip ahead in this video to see what the finished thing looks like, the finished uh, detail looks like, to see if you want to do it or not. But I think you're going to want to do it. It's really fun. This accent color, uh, we're going to create 10 I-cord tails. I-cord tail, using accent color, cast on three stitches using the long tail cast on method. And leave a little tail hanging like that, a little tail of yarn. Slip those three stitches onto the left needle. Knit three. We're going to repeat that 35 more times. Slip three, knit three. Slip three, knit three. When you repeat that 35 more times, you should count 36 total I chord rows. One, two, three, four. I need to keep on doing that till I count 36, and then we'll see how long it is. Knit three. Slip three, knit three. Keep on going. Your I-cord tail should look like this, about 36 rows long. And it might uh, be different for you if you have a tighter tension or a looser tension. The length we're going for is about seven inches, 18 centimeters for your I-cord tail. What's gonna happen is we're gonna weave it through, weave it through this antler cable so when the I-cord tail is in a circle, it should reach this little top point of the antler cable right here, and it should be able to stretch down to the bottom point with a little bit of space in between like that. So let's just give it a try, and we're gonna learn if we need to do a longer tail or a shorter tail next time. So break your yarn, break your accent color, and pull it through those three stitches. You could also do a knit three together. Or you could take your tapestry needle and just pull that tail through the three stitches. So that's nice and secure. And what we're going to do is weave in this I-cord tail. So take one of the yarn tails like this, and we're going to go into this gap. So each cable has this hole where the cable cross occurs. So we're going to go into that hole. And so we went under that one on the right. So this is the cable on the right of the antler cable. And then we're going to go under the next one. Make sure you're going through the gap and not into the fabric. Not like that, but into this gap. Pull it through. And then under the next one, under that right cable. And there's a fourth one. Under that fourth one and give it a pull. Don't pull it all the way through. You want to have a little bit of a tail poking out at the bottom like this. And now we're going to go across and we're going to go under, 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 under. So again, find that gap, that hole, that space like this. It should look just like that. And then into that next gap. Into that next gap, the third cable, and the fourth cable. There's four cable crosses on the right and on the left. This is what it should look like. So you want to maybe give that a little tug. You don't want it to be super tight. Ugh, no, that's too tight. You want to see a little bit of that accent color poking up at the top here. Ooh, that's a little too much. A little bit like that. And just give your cable a little stretch, a little pull, so it's not too tight, not too loose. So this is a good length for my I-cord, and we're going to seam them together at the bottom right here. Right there. So your the length of your I-cord cable should be long enough to do all of this. If you feel like it's not long enough, 
then knit some more rows. So instead of 36 rows, maybe you need to knit 40 or even 45 rows to make a long enough I-cord tail because maybe you're a tighter knitter or maybe you're a looser knitter and maybe your I-cord only needs to be 30 rows long. But it should not be too tight. You know, you don't want the fabric to be cinched like that. You want it to just give it a little tug. Just give it a little pull. Let it relax. It should be nice and relaxed. And you should be able to see the accent color. Okay, let's seam the I-cord cast on to the end. Seam the I-cord ends together. Just whip stitch. Stick it through the beginning. Stick it through the end a few times. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just like that. Stick it through. That's enough, but one more time. Yep, just like that. Okay, and once you've done that with one tail, you can take that tail and we, want, we can insert it into the middle of the I-cord. So if you just stick that tail through, if you just like go underneath these little ladders like eight times or so, like this, this is gonna hide the tail in the middle of the I-cord. So if you do that, see that, and just pull it through. Ooh, look at that. Where did that tail go? It's hidden in the cord. All right, I pulled my I-cord a little bit just so I have some length to work with. But just wait, it's gonna look real nice soon. I'm gonna take that other tail and maybe I'll just do one more little whip stitch thing there. All right, there we go. And then stick that same tail. We can go through the other direction underneath these little ladders. So like this, like that. This is gonna hide it, hide that tail into the I-cord tube. There we go, that's enough. Pull it through, and then you can just snip those tails. So pull the I-cord, and then just snip the tails. We're gonna hide those, snip the tail. Whoop, all done. And then pull on it. We wanna see that little decoration evenly stretched out. So it should look like this. And if that looks a little messy to you, what I'm gonna do is pull on this edge. I'm gonna hide that seam behind one of my little cable crosses. Ooh, and shift everything over a little bit. Ooh, that looks nice. The first one's gonna take a little bit of time, but then it becomes much more quick and easy, and it doesn't have to be too perfect. And if poking those tails through the I-cord tube seems like, oh, am I doing the right thing? You can also just poke the tails into the wrong side of the work and then weave in those tails on the wrong side with a little whip stitch. And that accent color will just be whipped on the wrong side instead of poking the tail through the I-cord tube. But it should look like that. And do that 10 times for all of the antler cables. And it's so beautiful. It adds this I-cord embellishment. That's the first time. Two, three, four, and five. And then do the same thing for the other antler cables. We're gonna go under, 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 and across, and then go under, 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 and seam. So again, this is what the direction of the tapestry needle's doing. It's going under these four with the I-cord tail, and then it travels over and goes under from the top along those four to the left, those four left cables. Pull the I-cord tail through, seam it closed, and all 10 antler cables will look like this. I used my accent color. If you wanna add a strand of mohair together, or if you wanna use a completely different color, or I could imagine a beautiful version, a really scrappy multicolor version, if you do a different color for each antler cable, you could do five different colors from your stash, and maybe use those same five colors or five new colors for the other five embellishments. It's totally up to you how you customize it, but I recommend doing the accent color 
if you're just working with your three colors because uh, yeah we're gonna have plenty of that accent color left over after our uh, knitting is done so you have enough to do those embellishments. So have fun. I really love this. I've never done this before. And this is one of those other elements in the shawl that might be new to you and you've never done in a shawl before. So I just really love all these new techniques that I'm playing with. The I-cord embellishments, those fun braids, and how it's all coming together in this beautiful collage of twists and turns. This is what your shawl should look like now. It looks a little bit weird with those new long strips that we added, and they're gonna curl a little bit, but don't worry about that, okay? We're gonna smooth that out later, and things will start to make more sense as we do the last sections. But you have seven total sections now. That beautiful section one, two with the short rows, sections four and five had those fun cables, and now we did those really cool I-cord little loop treatments on the cables. Did you like doing those? You could go back to all your other cabled sweaters and scarves and add little I-cord decorations to your cables now. Super fun. And if you want to do those with different colors, that would be a really cool personalized touch to customize those little cable accents. But those are the twisted stitch strips. Sections one, two, three, four, five, six and seven we just did. There's more sections to come. So where is this gonna go? Share your progress on Instagram with the hashtag WestnitsMCAL2022. And there's the Ravelry group. Don't forget to share your progress in that MCAL, Mystery Knit Along Ravelry group, so we can see all those fun colors and this cool funky shape starting to emerge.